Hey finders and welcome back to Fortune Finds and welcome to my first ever beauty roundup video. Being someone that absolutely loves anything to do with beauty, I am constantly trying new products. I wanna sit down and talk about the products that I've introduced to you guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be rehashing all of my feelings, my experiences on the products that I introduced to you guys in the months of January and February. Makeup, beauty, skincare, it's kind of like a relationship. I might try this today on camera and I might absolutely love it. I'm like lust head over heels for it. And then I get to know it and I'm kind of just like, mm, you were exciting in the beginning and now you're not that exciting. Like I'm kind of over you. Opinions change, feelings change and same goes with makeup. So I'm gonna be talking about each and every product, what I thought about them initially, what I think about them now, the best ways to use them, the worst ways to use them, and everything in between. Before we get into it, just a quick and friendly reminder, if you're not yet subscribed, be sure you subscribe and also click that bell button next to the subscribe button. This way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a new video here on my channel. If you're interested to hear all my thoughts, opinions, and feelings on the products in front of me, then just keep on watching. To be totally honest, I was gonna film this video tomorrow, but I absolutely love how my makeup came out today. If you're interested in this makeup look, I did this eyeshadow look using the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 Morphe palette. I will link it up here because I'm pretty sure that video has gone up before this one. So I'll put it up here and also down below in the description box. I don't have my Morphe concealer with me. I left it at work by accident, but I will touch upon that. Shiseido Synchro Skin Concealer, right? That is the name of this. I always forget the name of this concealer. So I did a wear test video where I wore this concealer on one side of my face and then the Morphe concealer that I mentioned I do not have on the other side of my face. And I did a full day wear test wearing both of them and I decided that at the end of the day that I liked my Morphe, I'm pretty sure it's camouflage, camouflage concealer better than this one. And this one is like quadruple the price. You guys know I hate wasting money. I talk about that a lot on my channel. So if I'm gonna buy a makeup product, I'm going to figure out any way that I can use it in my makeup routine. A lot of people love this. A lot of YouTubers love it. I first heard about it from Tati Westbrook. Can I, can I get through a video without mentioning Tati Westbrook? I'm not sure. This one is creasy. The best way to use this is use a very, very small amount. This is not a concealer where you can layer and layer and layer. It does get cakey. If you have textured dry under eyes, I do not recommend this for you. I have textured dry under eyes. If you have them, the way that it works for me is I will take this. I'm actually wearing this concealer today. I'll get in close for you guys. As you can see, it's not really that cakey um but it's not really that amazing at the same time but what i will do is i will take this doe foot i'll put some in here i'll put some out here and that's it and i will go ahead and blend it underneath my eyes less is more when it comes to this concealer when it comes to application some days i can apply this with a brush and then other days i have to apply it with a sponge on days where my under eyes are more dry than usual, I will apply this with a sponge on days where my under eyes are nice and hydrated and I'm having a good skin day in this region, I will go ahead and use a brush. I would not spend my money on this. I do not recommend this. I don't think this is like a foolproof concealer, especially if you are someone that goes in heavy handed with a concealer, I don't recommend this. I think that the Morphe Camouflage, is that what it's called? I don't know, what is it? tell me. I'll tell you right here. I think that's better. It's $9 and that is one that I can definitely layer and layer and layer. Like if I am having a heavy bag day and I just need a little extra concealer, that Morphe one, I can put two, three layers on and it is nice. In terms of layers, I will tell you that if you do one layer, you really don't need to powder it. It does stay intact. It is supposed to be a matte concealer. The Shiseido one is definitely dewier. During the week when I don't apply too much makeup on my face, I'll apply one layer of the Morphe concealer, tap it out. I will usually tap it out with my finger or tap it out with a damp beauty sponge and then I don't need to set it. It doesn't really settle in my fine lines. If anything, it settles in my bigger fine lines, which I don't mind because honestly, if you have any lines, they're going to settle in your bigger lines. If you want to use two layers of the Morphe concealer because you're just having like a dark bag day, then I would definitely set it using a translucent setting powder. The Tati Beauty Blendables. I have this one and it also comes with a smaller one. You guys saw that video. If you didn't, I will link it up here where I did a full on review. My feelings towards this have not changed at all. I don't like to blend out my foundation with this. I just think that again, I have really dry textured skin. I really think a damp beauty sponge is your best bet 
to apply any face products. I do love this for powders and I do really, really love this to apply my primers. So I use the Tarte Clean Slate Primer, which Tati Westbrook also loves. Tati is the creator of Tati Beauty, obviously. So I will, and I did today, I took a little bit of my Clean Slate Primer, which is actually right here. I just took it directly from the pot and then pushed it into my skin and it just cancels out my pores. This is lovely for powders. I really do chisel out my face using this product. I will go ahead and I will set my under eyes and then I will go ahead and contour my face using other brushes, my sponge, but then I will use this to help chisel out the contour with powder. This is beautiful for powder. I feel like if you have oily skin, you will like this more for foundation and other skin products. However, if you're dry, I feel like you just need that extra moisture that a damp sponge can only give you. Don't go into this thinking that this will replace all of your beauty brushes, all of your sponges. I think you need a mix of everything, you know? Okay, the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. I'm wearing this today. I use this to contour my face. The only thing I'm gonna say is when I used this for the first couple times, I really did like this applicator on my face. However, I learned very quickly that this applies a little bit too much. So now what I do is I will take some on the back of my hand or I will put one on my little makeup plates. I've been using a brush like this to just dip in and contour my face. I'm a really big fan. I think it lasts really nice. I think the color is beautiful for me. I love it. I highly recommend it. I just think that applying it from the tube can just be a little dangerous, a little dangerous. There have been multiple times where I've went in with this and drawn on my face and then blended it out and I had to go in and really clean up the contour. So save yourself the time and just apply this to the back of your hand and work from there. Love Craft Beauty. I absolutely love this. I've used this in a few videos. I have to say Cymbeline is my favorite, favorite shade. And I think that's because this kind of reminds me of my BH Cosmetics. It's very similar to that bronzer that I have, the Golden Gal bronzer, which I also left at work. So I cannot show you, but you guys have seen that so many times. I don't need to show you. I use all, all three shades, but I'm going to tell you how I use them. So Aditya, I, don't, I still don't know how to say these. I'll take this with a dense brush and I will keep this to the outer. Actually, let's put some on right now. This shade with a dense brush like this and I will pack it in the back and it packs a pigment, but it's really great for contouring and I will just stamp, stamp, stamp. The only thing with this palette is that you need to take the time to blend these shades unless you're gonna do what I did today which is I went in with a big fluffy brush, I went in with Cymbeline, and I bronzed my face. That, if you use a fluffy brush with these, you don't need to spend as much time blending. It's just if you go in with a dense brush to contour, you need to just pat over and blend. That is really the only thing that I have to say negatively, but it's not even really negative. See, so yeah, I just need to go over it a couple times. But how, like, that just takes my contour to a whole other level. It's really beautiful. I use this as an eyeshadow. It's really great. It packs a pigment, but it's blendable. A lot of the time when I don't feel like reaching for an eyeshadow palette, I'm just sitting here, I'm in a rush Monday through Friday, I'm going to work. I will hop into Cymbeline on a fluffy brush like this. I will put it in the crease, put it underneath the eye. I'll take a little bit of Aditya, which is the darkest shade, and I'll put that on the outer third. And then I will take some of the Suniva. Again, I don't know how to say these. Sorry if I'm saying them wrong. I will take this and just brush it across the lid. And I have a nice bronzed eye with a little bit more dimension. Highly recommend this. Absolutely love this. This is one of my favorite contouring products, honestly. And I might even love this more than the Charlotte Tilbury. This is an indie brand. I love it. Support indie brands. Super into it. And I like that it is light, it's small, and it's compact and you can take it everywhere with you. My Touch and Soul No Problem Priming Water. This is not a water. This is not a lotion. This is a oil. If you have oily skin, you're not gonna like this. It's very oily, it's very hydrating though, so if you were a dry-skinned lady like myself, you will love this. Um, but it doesn't make my pores go away at all. It makes my pores like come out and ready to party, so the mix that I've been doing, because it is the winter here on the East Coast, it is cold, I have dry skin. I will go about my daily skincare routine and then I will use this as a final step. So what I do is I'll take a few pumps of this, massage this into my skin, and then I've been going in with my Clarisonic Mia Smart. I have the firming head on it right now and I've been using this priming oil. Let's just call it a priming oil even though it's a priming water. 
and I will use that as like a slip to really move this about my face and just tighten my face. I use this today. I find that it makes quite a difference or at least it makes a difference to me. I don't know if you can see a difference, but it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like my face is a little bit tighter. So that is how I've been using that. And then to go ahead and counteract my pores, I will then go in with this, with my Tati Beauty, go in here and then press this into my skin. And then my face is ready, primed, and you know ready for makeup application. I think the marketing on this is very misleading. It's not gonna erase your pores, but it will hydrate your skin. I hope that helps. If you're looking for a nice hydrating primer, I really do recommend this. I think it smells really nice. It's a nice product, but it's not gonna hide your pores. And, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, the Dewy Blush Bouquet, their blush duo. I'm not wearing this today because I didn't wanna powder my whole face because my skin is really dry today. Wherever you're gonna apply this, which I mean, I, sometimes I apply blush like all over my face, but ideally I would go into something like my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. Where is it? I don't know. More organized in 2020, she said. Okay, I will take some of this powder and just stamp it wherever I'm gonna put that blush. I don't know what it is, but every time I apply this over my foundation without powdering over my foundation first, this blush kind of takes away my foundation. Has anyone else experienced this with these blushes? Please let me know. I don't know what it is. I've tried using different brushes. I've used this angle brush. I've used this fluffier brush. It just takes away my foundation if I don't powder it. If you're someone in a rush and you don't like to powder your face, you're dry, you don't wanna do that extra powdering, I don't recommend this. However, I think the colors are beautiful. I think that this blush lasts a really long time. Like this is a blush that will make it through the day. If you pack it on, it's gonna last. I think if you're spending the money on this, you shouldn't have to worry about it taking away your foundation. You know, like a girl doesn't really ask for much. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I don't know where my liner is, but I have the lipstick. So I really love the shape of this lipstick. I think it's really comfortable, really cushiony. It lasts a couple hours. It's nice. It's a really nice formula. It's matte, but it's not too matte. It's matte, but doesn't show the fine lines in your lips. It doesn't make my lips crusty and I have very dry lips. It's just everything about me is dry, okay? I'm just gonna pat a little bit of it. But it feels really nice. At least once a week I wear this shade. If you're gonna get a Pillow Talk lip product, I would highly recommend the lip liner. I think the lip liner blows the lipstick out of the water. But if you like the shade, then get the lipstick, get the liner. It's a nice shade. It's just, I have other shades that I like more and I just feel like the hype for Pillow Talk is like so high that I'm just anti it, you know? I'll wear it. I didn't drink the Kool-Aid, I guess. Get the lip liner, you don't need the lipstick. That's it. I'm gonna leave it at that. The Artist Couture Spotlight Glitz in Diamond Lights Finisher, or is it Diamond Lights Finisher in Spotlight Glitz? I'm not sure, but this is amazing. I absolutely love this. This is so pretty. I mean, I don't really know if I can like swatch this for you guys, but it's kind of just like a really pretty dusting of glitter. And I use this as a final step. So what you don't want to do with this is put it on your lid and then decide like, oh, I want to darken up the crease or oh, I need to blend out the crease because the glitter will get everywhere. It will get all over your face. It's, you're just going to ruin your makeup. So Go in with this as a final step. You can pack this on with your finger. Again, you can pack this on with a brush. I recommend you packing it on with a damp brush like this that will really give you the, the ultimate shine that you're really looking for. But this is beautiful. This is dramatic. I love this for the lid. I love this for underneath the brow bone. I just think this is a beautiful, beautiful glitter. It's a little pricey, but if you're looking for a really pretty glitter, this is nice. If you own Tachi Beauty, her textured neutrals volume one palette, which I'm gonna talk about in a couple minutes here, you don't need this. Like the glitters in there are just like this. I just, I really love this and I'm really into Artist Couture lately. It's a brand that I've been exploring. Once it's on, it stays on and it will not migrate. It will not move to the rest of your face as long as you use it as a final step. I mentioned to you guys that I've been filling my brows in with this Smashbox eyeshadow shade. Still doing it. Today I used the Glossier Brow Flick, which you guys know I was really loving on towards the end of 2019. 
I wanted to use the Glossier Brow Flick because it's been a minute since I used it, but I'm still loving this. I love to use this eyeshadow right here. I will go ahead and brush my brows up and then dip into here and fill them in. Looking at this palette, you would think like, oh, she should go in with like this shade, but it's best to go in with a cool tone when you're filling in your brows, just because this can come off a little bit too orangey red. So just try it. Take a shade that is more of a cool toned, like grayish, taupey brown. Try that, fill it in. Guarantee you that this will be the quickest you've ever filled your brows in. Literally takes me like less than a minute to fill in both of my brows. Life-changing. If you're new to brows, it's a really good idea to fill in your brows with shadow because it's just easy and it's shadow. If you mess it up, you can just go like that. You want it to stay all day, just set them with a the clear brow gel. My Wet n Wild Mega Liners. My sister told me to buy this. She said this is the best liner. These are the best liners that I have at the moment. They could be better, I will say that. I really like the applicator. You guys know I'm not really let me see, do I have one? Okay, I got rid of all of the liners that I recently talked about and hated on. But I like these because they have a really skinny tip that's kind of, it's not flimsy, but it bends. I don't love a liner where the applicator is super dense and doesn't move and is just like a pen. I don't like that. I need something with more of a bend in it. I find it to be easier to apply liner when it has a tip like this. So I really love the tip. I find that it really helps me to get an even liner more so than a stiffer tip. So as you can see, I feel like my liner is pretty even today. And I did use this Wet n Wild Mega Liner in black. And I really, really, really love the brown. The only thing I'm going to say is that if you're gonna, the kind of person that likes to put a lot of eyeshadow on and then go over the shadow with a liner, it will kind of like fade over the section of my eye that has a little bit too much shadow. I hope that makes sense. And you do need to dip back and forth quite a bit with this. Just know that like one dip is not gonna get you to do one wing. You're gonna have to dip in a few times. These are beautiful on their own. They don't transfer. So like if you guys watched my declutter video, I got rid of like all of them. They would flake all over my face or they would migrate up here. And that is not the case with these. They do not flake all over my eye. They do not fade throughout the day. They're really great, especially for the price. So if you are someone that is looking for a new eyeliner, go to your local drugstore, pick these up. You will not be disappointed. They're like $3 and change. And they're better than a lot of the eyeliners that I had that were like $25 plus. Okay, my space case highlighters. These are blinding. I really do love them. And I think the best way to apply them is to take a little highlighter brush like this, dip in here, pat it all over the cheek, and then take some on your finger and tap it over the highest points. I really think it looks beautiful. However, I'm going to tell you that if you are someone that has really textured skin in this area, you have a lot of wrinkles, you have acne, you have bumps, you have anything in this area, this is really going to accentuate any kind of texture. So I only use this in this section of my face. So I will only apply this highlighter over here. I will not apply it on my chin. I will not apply it on my cupid's bow. I will not apply it between my brows because those areas are very textured. I have dry skin. This area of my face just so happens to be okay, but this area, this area, and this area are very textured. So when I do use this, I only use this here, and then I will go in with a highlighter elsewhere. If you have textured skin, you're not gonna like this. I like that it's buildable, so you can go in with a brush and just put it on and it will be a really nice subtle highlight, but if you go in with that finger, it's really gonna pack on the pigment and it's gonna be blinding. Okay, and then last but not least for this month's beauty roundup, I have to mention my favorite. I feel like it'll be my favorite for a while, but I'll say at the moment because I try a lot of eyeshadows and I and you guys know I love NARS, but oh my God, the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Palette. I really love this, guys. I cannot tell you how worth it this product is. These sequin formulas are unlike anything. These glitter formulas are unlike anything. Honestly, buy this palette for the sequins and the glitters alone. The metallics are really nice. The mattes are really nice. I did a whole video on this palette. If you're interested, I'll link it up here and I will put it down below. But just to give you a very quick rundown in case you don't want to watch that, which you should just watch it anyway because it was a really good video. And I did three looks using this palette in that video. But the mattes 
are really nice. They go on very pigmented, but if you put a little bit too much on, they will blend out and you can really buff them, blend them until they fade to the intensity of your liking. So that is a really big plus for the mattes. The sequins are beautiful. It's like a beautiful matte shade with a hint of glitter that really catches the light and really just makes your eyeshadow a hundred times more interesting. Honestly, the metallics are nice. Typical metallics go on really nicely, go on the best using your finger, and then the glitter, same kind of thing with the Artist Couture. Use these glitters as a final step because let me tell you something, if you go in with one of these glitters and then you decide like, oh, I wanna make my crease a little bit darker, I need to blend it out a little bit more, these glitters are going to get all over your face, they're gonna ruin your makeup. In my next beauty roundup, I will talk about other eyeshadows, like I got the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Volume 2 palette, which I also am really, really loving at the moment. So I will play with the two of them and then I will let you know in my next roundup which one I like more. All right guys, and that concludes my beauty roundup for the month of January and February. I will be doing this every month. So my next beauty roundup, I will be covering the products that I use in March. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If this is a type of video that you like, you find this helpful, be sure to let me know down below in the comments section and also give it a thumbs up. This way I know that you like this content. This is something that you would like to see. I really hope that this helps you guys a little bit more. I hope that sitting down and just chatting through these products can really give you guys like the overall story and the overall picture of how I go about using them, of my journey using them, so on and so forth. I feel like when I watch YouTube channels, whoever's channel it is, will say, I really love this product. It's so great, oh my God. And it's like the first or second time that they used it. And then down the road, they're kind of just like, either they never use it again on their channel or they're just like, oh, I like this one. This is my favorite one. And it's kind of like, well, you were raving about the other one. Like, which one is it? So I really hope that that takes any of the guessing that you may have maybe when watching my channel out of it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and also click that bell button. This way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a new video here on my channel. I had a great time as always. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you in my next one. Bye finders. Mwah.